Deep Rock is a FPS PvE co-op game produced by Danish indie studio Ghost Ship Games. It pretty much revolves being a maniac dwarf where you go on missions to either mine for resources, salvage mills, kill certain monsters or more. You're basically planted in a procedurally generated cave where endless hordes of alien creatures are there to stop you from completing your goal. Now this game gets co-op. Don't get me wrong, there are many awesome co-op games out there, but Deep Rock has a special appreciation for the co-op genre. Ghost Ship has even made it clear that they had an intent to focus on the co-op aspects, even if you can play the game as solo. In every co-op game, I believe there are certain elements that make a really great co-op game, and Deep Rock Galactic actually hits all of them, which is a very, very rare kind of thing to see. So let's get into why Deep Rock is an awesome co-op game, and let's go through those points. For every co-op and multiplayer game I look at, I ask a few simple questions. Is it easy to set up and play with friends? And is there lag or anything that's causing lag? You'd be surprised how many games out there completely suck at this, even if the game itself is great. For example, For Honor, when they first released, used P2P networking for their PvP, and you can imagine how badly that went. And Minecraft. I love Minecraft. But one thing that annoys the heck out of me is the fact to play with friends, you're kind of stuck with two choices. One is hosting yourself, which can be complicated and relies on having a good computer as well as a good network connection. The second option is to use a public server, which obviously can lead to a lot of griefing and other potential issues. Deep Rock Galactic makes it super easy. For Steam, you can easily join someone's game or just get simply invited in the menu. You can lock down the game privately or if you want somebody to join the game, just leave it open. It's that simple. There's absolutely no lag or anything that makes me go, wow, this networking sucks because they use dedicated servers, obviously. When a game gets complex, it can go two ways. One is you really enjoy the complexity and it builds out into a great game. However, the second option is normally the complexity gets too complex and you get kind of bored because it just goes over your head. Now, normally it's okay in a, like kind of like a single player game because you can learn the game slowly at your own pace, but it becomes an issue when you're playing a co-op game where you have more than two people or even four people playing a game and you have different learning paces. Now, this causes a big problem if you don't balance the game out. And if one person is lagging behind the other, then the one person might just get bored and quit the game, right? Dick Brock Galactic is complex enough, but also keeps it simple enough so it doesn't confuse the player. Your role is clear in the game. Your what skills you have are pretty clear. What mission objectives you have are also pretty clear. But beyond that, you're not hand-fed what you need to do. How you build out your skill tree is up to you. How you do the objectives is up to you. And honestly, that's what makes the game fun because it balances the whole complexity and simplicity enough that no player feels like lag, they're lagging behind, right? Because you have the objectives there, but how you build out your own character and how you do objectives is completely up to you. So I think the game avoids too much complexity, but keeps it still a bit of complexity just to keep the game a bit more fun. The third point I want to look into was, is there a need for a team? Can you lose if the team like screws up? Now, this may seem like a pretty obvious point for a co-op game to have like the ability to have a team and just work together, but you'd be surprised how many games out there just simply feels like a single player game but just mixes multiplayer into it. And in the end, it just becomes like kind of a solo adventure with just an occasional comms with your team, right? Deep Rock Galactic is a team game. Not only is teamwork obviously rewarded, so better rewards if everyone's alive, as well as this a feel of accomplishment, there are certain objectives, just it just works better if you have a team. Not only, for example, from defending from the horde, but also doing certain mining objectives, where some need to defend while some need to collect. As you play more in difficulty settings, teamwork becomes even more important, as the longer you stay in a mission, the higher chance of failing. Resources become finite, and needing to work together is rewarded if you're efficient, right? So, Deep Rock Galactic has a lot of team elements, which I'm not gonna I'm gonna go through in some more details in the next few points as well. Now, my fourth point relates to the third point previously. Does everyone have their own part? This doesn't necessarily mean that everyone needs a unique role, but at least different enough to make the gameplay unique. Now, Deep Rock Galactic does this pretty obviously. You have a gunner, an engineer, a scout, as well as a digger. As I mentioned before, the game gives enough prompts for you to figure out what you really need to do in the end, but you still need to figure out 
what equipment and what you're meant to do, right? So let me give you an example. So as a scout, you're given a flare gun as well as a grappling hook. This pretty much indicates a need to collect resources in obscure locations as always well just obviously scout the like area through using flare guns so you can see high points of the map. On the flip side, a gunner has a machine gun plus zip points. This indicates more likely you're a offensive role or defensive role depending how you look at it. And the ability to set up terrain with zip lines gives you easier movement for your teammates, right? So you can already see how Deep Rock has set up people's roles. Which is great if you're a casual gamer and you need guidance on what to do or what your role entails. But also if you're a hardcore gamer, you can actually customize your build path a lot more. The fifth point I kind of wanted to talk about was the whole aspect around direct play to play interaction. What I mean by this, well, a simple mechanic that a lot of games have, uh, especially in co-op games and multiplayer games, is if one person goes down, you can revive them. That's a very simple mechanic. But a lot of games kind of just leave it there, right? So in my opinion, having this interaction is what makes a co-op game extra special. Many games fail in this part, not because the game itself is bad, but because the game wasn't really designed to have those interactions. A common example are single player games that eventually enabled multiplayer into it. And it just feels like you're just playing a solo game with friends, essentially, right? Deep Rock Galactic makes a great effort to make the direct player interaction obvious. A common one is the scout and engineer combo, where scouts can grapple hook to high places, but without a platform, you're just grappling and then falling down to your death. Engineer can't make to the high spots because obviously they don't have a grapple hook, but they can place platforms for scouts to perch on and collect much needed resources. So that's a very simple mechanic, which isn't really enforced in the game, but you kind of figure it out on your own. Beyond this, you have obviously your zip lines, as well as just other stuff like around your perks. Some of your perks are more solo focused, while some perks are followed focused around your team, like taking less friendly fire, as well as reviving them faster. And that's what, make, that's what makes Deep Spot Galactic a bit of a special game because it has all this direct play to play interaction between roles. And that, in my opinion, makes the game extra special. Now, my last point revolves around the whole need for a quarterback player. Now, have a quick think. How many games out there have you played with friends where you kind of just went, you know what, I carried them or they carried me and I just did nothing? There are a lot of games like this, right? And honestly, in a co-op game, you kind of want the whole aspect around teams, which is why my last three points was around teamwork. And if you don't have that, you kind of fall short, right? And so, Deep Rock Galactic does this quite well by balancing the whole need for a team. And everyone has a unique role. Everyone has a unique gameplay. And so you're coming together to kind of do what you're meant to do to do the whole objectives, right? And so, if you kind of think about it, you don't really need a carry play in Deep Rock because everyone's kind of doing their own part. Yes, you can argue that, for example, a scout could zip around and survive if three people are dead and try to revive everyone, yes. But that's the limit of how much you can do in terms of carrying, right? Like, Deep Rock Galactic balances it quite well and that's what makes the game super fun because you're relying on everyone to do their job. And when you reduce the need for a quarterback player, the game becomes fun and becomes playable for a longer time. In my opinion. So there you have it. Those are my six elements which I look for in every co-op game. And in my opinion, Deep Rock Galactic hits everyone pretty um, well, right? So if you have any comments or questions, as well as just any, like maybe disagreements or anything, just post a comment below and let's talk about it because I love co-op games. I love, love playing co-op games and I always like to explore if a co-op game's good, right? And in the end, I always love to discuss about this. So just let me know. As you know, these are, these are my opinions. So yeah, thanks for listening and thanks for watching.